the story. I started walking to the left and next minute this man come around the corner and he caught me by surprise because next minute as he got closer to me he drew out this huge carving knife and started walking towards me. And so I'm thinking I should scream but at that moment this high praise call come out of my mouth and next minute the guy he stopped in his tracks it wasn't until later I realised, yeah, that had to be an angel behind me. G'day, I'm Jimmy Colfax. Welcome to The Story, where today the courageous Mary Hutton will share how she said no to retirement and decided to become a missionary in a poor section of Bogota, Colombia. She jokingly refers to it as being retreaded for the Lord and she absolutely loves ministering to the children there. We'll hear her remarkable story, including the time she was rescued by an angel today on The Story. Mary Hutton is chatting with Shelley Scowen. I'm having a chat with Mary Hutton. She's one of these people who's decided not to retire. She says that she's been sent out retreaded. Mary, I love that uh, expression. (laughs) Hi, Sally. (laughs) Um, Yes, I think um, sometimes God has... um, yeah, different ideas and we have ourselves. So, yeah, I always say I have good ideas, but he has the God idea. Yeah, and he's got plenty of them and he likes to use us in his kingdom plans. Yes. Your mission work has really been in the second half of your life rather than in the first. Yes. So let's have a bit of a chat about, uh, I guess, the first half of your life. Though You're a fairly normal Aussie girl from a farm in South Australia. Yep. Uh, Tell us about the early part of your life. Um, on the block then, on the citrus, yeah, we yeah, had yeah. a citrus block on the Murray River at Loxton. Well, actually, it's called New Residence, just out of Loxton. And we, we lived there for 23 years, I think, and raised our children there. I have um, two daughters and a son, and they're all grown up and married, and I have 10 grandchildren. Right, so... so blessed. (laughs) Absolutely blessed, yeah. (laughs) And a a relatively normal life here in Australia that uh, many of us can relate to, obviously. Uh, A lot of farmers listening in this morning as well. So then, all of a sudden, you decided to up and leave to Spain. Where did that come from? Well, it wasn't my decision. I had been teaching young adolescents in my church about serving in the church and having a mission vision. But it was like in 1998 that um, the Lord spoke to me about um, going to Bogota, to the street children of Bogota, which just floored me. So <laughs> so um, my good plans again sort of reversed on me and it was me going out and not any of the children (laughs) and god knew all along wasn't it (laughs) yes yeah it's probably one of his pre-plans he has for us and the good works he has in store for us so what was it about bogota that really captured your heart well um, at that time it wasn't anything i didn't even know where bogota was so (laughs) (laughs) it was just a quick reference of South America and um, yeah, and then Colombia, Bogota. I had a lot of um, people fearful for my my safety because Bogota doesn't have a, or Colombia doesn't have a very good reputation. So um, yeah, a lot of people were worried for me to go there. But my family, it was like my family God had already prepared them and they seen me as going out like a pioneer to work with children so Mm. that was a blessing for me too yeah yeah it's a big change of life though moving from a small town uh, Loxton in South Australia all the way to one of the top 25 largest cities in the world it's huge and even the population density is massive yes what was the culture shock like <laughs> Enormous. <laughs> yeah. I'm a country girl at heart, and um, yeah, to shove me into a big city is, um, yeah. And uh, if we're talking about Colombia, they don't have any personal space, so that's another big shock for an Australian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but first, I did go to Spain, 
um, I did some deputation work and they suggested that I go to Spain for two years and I was just out of the capital, Madrid, there in Torrijon and I was um, learning the la Spanish language and also working with some children there in a mission group. So it was a real big learning curve for me there in all ways. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. And then after the agreement was after two years that I would, uh, they would release me to go to Colombia, which um, I did. I, I went there in 2001 and come back in the middle of 2003. And, um, and it was a wonderful experience over there for me. But my heart was, yeah, God had really planted his heart in my heart for Colombia. So... I knew I had to leave there, even though the mission team didn't want me to go from there. But so it was a bit of a battle to get away and get focused again for for Bogota in Colombia. Yeah, it's interesting how God gives you the heart for places. I've kind of found that in my life as well, where God yeah. leads you by putting that passion inside you, rather than dragging you all the way to the other side of the world against your will. It's not yeah. like you know He was dragging you to Nineveh. You actually really wanted to go. Yes, yes, yeah. Because I see it if we're willing and available, and also want to be obedient to the Lord. You know. Um, it's the Father, I feel I'm working out the Father's dreams, you know, mm. and so he places them in the dreams or desires or destiny in our hearts, doesn't he? Yeah. I think not necessarily for everyone in every circumstance no. in life. I think there are certainly times when God um, just tells you that he, you have to go and do whatever it is. But certainly I found in my life and in a lot of decisions that God just puts that heart inside you that yes. you really want to go and do these things that he's uh, given you the passion for. Yes, that's so true. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I had to actually jump on Google, jump on Wikipedia, the source of all knowledge, and uh, find out a little bit about Bogota in Colombia. Can you just paint a bit of a picture for us of what life is like in Bogota? All right. Yeah, I didn't know until I got there either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I left here in 2005 in, and arrived there the 22nd of August. And I, yeah, Bogota is a huge, huge, sprawling um, city of um, 8 million people. Mm. And so, and it's very diverse in, they have stratas for different sections of where people live. And so the street, there's a lot of street people there and they are strata zero. Now, I live up in the hills, very high up, higher than um, the Bogota itself, and that's strata one. So I'm sort of just over the edge. <laughs> and then you have um, a little bit better strata two and three, but they're still low, very low income people. And it gets better as it goes, strata four, five, and six. Um, many people believe that Colombia is like a third world country, but that is not true because it is an up and thriving um, city, especially going up the centre up to the north. It's very quite rich there, but there are a lot of people that are on the street and um, and they choose to live that way and they get caught in the drugs and all that. So, yeah, it's not a good part of Bogota, I suppose, mm. with your street people. But And then where I live, it's, um, yeah, it's just so dense population up there too where I live. I live with people. I have a house for myself and, and like a club as well. So I have a two-story house. But um, Bogota... Uh, yeah, it's a real mixture, as I say, of the rich and the poor, and they have a huge army and a huge police force as well that yeah. sort of tries to keep things under control as best they can. It, it's a massive city in terms of population. I would think then that it's a massive city in terms of area and distance as well. Yes, very much so, yes. It takes me two hours by bus to get 
from the, on down the south and then up into the hills. Mm. And uh, to get up towards the north, it takes me two hours to cross the city, basically. Right. Yeah. So there you are living in a Strata 1 area and you're running a club for kids. I take it these kids are ones that uh, have a lot of needs? Uh, yes, they're high-risk children. They, they're quite happy children. There's hundreds of them. I have hundreds. <laughs> really? And I have this, uh, it's called Club de, de Amigos, which means friendship club. And the whole idea of that is to invite the children in for an hour and we do different age groups and they come in during the week and they play. And we have also, we have coloring and we have um, jigsaw puzzles and table games and dolls and cars, all, all the things the kids love. And that's, that's for us. And that it's, so we have that twice a week for the primary children. And then we have two hours for uh, girls, youth girls. And on Saturday mornings, we have two hours for the youth boys that um, very early they come in for discipleship and football. That's the boys. <laughs> And the whole idea of that was the Lord's plan that we form a relationship with these children by playing with them. So it's good fun. Yeah. <laughs> but on Saturdays, there's another whole plan where God wants us to teach the children to have a relationship with Jesus. Mm. And so we, we have four sessions come in then. They start from two-year-olds to six-year-olds in the first session and then as they're going out, there's other children ready to come in and uh, they're um, seven to eight-year-olds and then we have lunch and then we have uh, nine to 11-year-olds come in and as they're going out, the teenagers are waiting to come in. And so, yeah, we work. I have some wonderful people that come and help me, Colombians, um, to teach the children on those days. So. Mm. Yeah, we finished by about three o'clock in the afternoon. You're listening to The Story. Today, Shelley Scowen is chatting with the courageous missionary, Mary Hutton, who ministers to children in a poor section of Bogota, Colombia. Next, we'll hear about the time she was rescued by an angel and what life is like being in your 70s and living in a house with no running water. That and more when we return. 